So I reviewed the S18, took it to the pump track for a demo, and went on a 300 mile road trip to fully test out its range capabilities. But the one thing I have never discussed in detail, which may be the reason why you still want the King's S18, despite the fact that it has the smallest battery pack and lower top speed, is of course, it's supposedly off-road prowess. And this week, we're gonna finally address that subject by tackling the most challenging mountain bike trail I have ever ridden on and put both the SAT as well as my own skill to the ultimate test. Are you ready to see some crashes? Ah! Roll the intro. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and click on that bell icon to be notified of new episodes. Now I've been riding the Kingston S18 at Forest Park in Queens for the past few weeks and feeling quite comfortable handling the level trails there and nothing against Forest Park since it is after all the spots I grew up riding. But on the scale of technical difficulties, it is more like a 1 or 2 out of a 5. <laughs> So to really put the S18 as well as my own skill to the test, I figure I need to find something a little bit more challenging. But to find more challenging trails, I'll have to get a bit further out of my own comfort zone quite literally as I'll have to hop on a train and head north. Which is what brought us about 50 miles north of the city so that we can ride the Spring Ridge Park, a 268 acre park that has been described by avid mountain biker in the area as scary. Now I actually sort of took a wrong train because I came a little bit too far north. Google had recommended that I take a train to Terrytown. I assume it's because that Terrytown was an express stop so it actually work out to be a little bit quicker. But 10 miles not too far. Shouldn't take me more than half an hour. Well, the road is kind of rough. <laughs> Hopefully nobody's gonna run me over. And thankfully, I didn't have to stay on regular roads for long. Remember this? This was the South County bike trail. I came this way when I did the uh, Monster Long Distance Range Test. This is my preferred trail to ride, separated from auto traffic, and cut through some absolutely beautiful section of Westchester. By the way, if you notice, I also brought my full face helmet today. Oh, Jesus, almost made it. Since I'm gonna be riding mostly off-road today, so I am a bit more concerned about protecting myself from the potential face plan than having to, whoa, Jesus, than having to worry about watching out for traffic. But for day-to-day -day ride, I still prefer my three-quarter PLC helmet since it's lighter weight and does not restrict my movement as much so I can more easily look over my own shoulder and see what cars are sneaking up on me. And I know some people may disagree, but I really think that safety isn't just about piling on more gear, but finding something that complements your own riding style and environments. But let's not dwell on that since I didn't want to turn this into another boring safety video. Of course, I have once again grossly underestimated travel time as an hour later. <laughs> so I'm at a gas station and they had a plug outdoor that they're willing to let me use. So I bought myself a burger. I'm gonna have lunch. Well, I wait for it to charge a little bit. Right now, the wheel is actually at um, 85% and I have the 5 amp charger, so it wouldn't really take long. I fully expected to burn through a whole lot of electrons at the park, so I wanted to top up as much as I can before. And the upgraded charger did deliver as promised, so I was able to quickly get back on the road. I'm not actually quite sure how much of the trail I'd be able to ride, since you don't see very many examples of this, and that is not terribly surprising considering how an electric unicycle is built. See, the thing with the hub motor, which electric unicycle is powered on, is that they all require a hollow 
tubular woohoo, axle, which allows power pass through. As a result, they're never quite as strong as the axle on, let's say, a BMX or regular bicycle. That is not going to work. I guess I can do a lift. <coughs> which means that if you were to regularly do tall drops or jumps on your electric unicycle, you stand a good chance of either bending your axle or denting your rim. Neither of which are simple nor cheap things to fix. But with the suspension wheels, you have a big old shock to dampen the force of the rider weight coming down on the axle, so theoretically landing jumps should exert a lot less stress on the components. But forget about the wheel, let's make sure that I survive the drop first! It took some acclimating, but I have gotten quite comfortable tackling most of the obstacles at Forest Park, which for the most part are pretty straightforward, but there are several tricky sections that took some practices to overcome, such as the rocky and root cover climbing section that required twisting the wheel and navigating a better line. Or the steep, twisty downhill runs that require avoiding rock while maintaining grip on loose sandy surfaces. The nimbleness of the SA team certainly helped. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the kind of trails I enjoy riding, which I think would also speak a little bit towards what kind of uh, wheel that the SA Ting is. So the kind of trail I enjoyed the most are the super technical, oh, windy <laughs> trail that often requires that you find your way and overcome very technical sections. <laughs> and a good deal of thinking as to finding the exact right line so as to navigate yourself around difficult terrains. Oh shit, that was really rough. And as much as I enjoy high-speed cruising on the street, in the woods I actually don't mind taking my time. And that is my polite way of telling you that the S18 is not a very fast wheel, surprisingly even when compared to its predecessor. So when I was riding the 16X, which actually shares a similar motor as the S18, but with a much larger battery. I was constantly pushing right up against the speed limit of 31 miles per hour. Let me see. Oh, <laughs> weak saws. So on the S18, I'm much more comfortable cruising at about 25 to 28 miles per hour. Even on roads where there's not a lot of traffic, the wheel just doesn't quite feel like it has the same amount of oomph. Uh, but likely because they have a smaller battery pack and so have more tendency to sag under load. And I feel like that is something that you can actually feel once you have enough uh, experience riding an electric unicycle. There's that sense of weakness. This is probably a terrible idea because now that I'm on this section, I realize it's covered with broken glass. I don't think this section of railway is active. I don't think, which is a terrible assumption to make. Kind of a trail. But if you're really thinking about speed for any reason or the lack thereof, King Song is really not the right wheel for you. Because I believe some time ago, the president of King Song actually had officially made his position no speed above 31 miles per hour is unsafe. So it looks very unlikely for King Song to ever make a wheel that goes faster than that speed. My love for finding poor wheel, nice off-road trail to ride also often get me into trouble. Like you're seeing right now. I have nowhere, nowhere, I have no idea where it is I'm going. One time when I went snowboarding, I actually ended up getting myself stuck in a string. We're somewhere, I don't know. That would have made for a wonderful opening to a Chainsaw Massacre horror movie, but unfortunately I ruined it completely by finding my way. Anyhow, back to my trip 
up to Rye Spring Ridge. As I was saying, I was actually feeling somewhat confident of my chances, but little did I know, I was in for a rude awakening. I finally arrived at the park, which looked quite mild manner, from the road despite its fearsome reputation, but that appearances didn't last long, and neither did my confidence, as I fell miserably right from the get-go. The trails was littered with rocks, root, trees, and none of it flat. Section were so narrow, one slip would have meant a tumble down the hill, and that is just trails connecting the various challenging features, which range from very difficult to insane, a few of which are essentially sheer rock cliff that you somehow roll yourself down and pray that you survive. This place, I intentionally went on a Friday so as to avoid the weekend crowd and not let myself get in the way of regular riders. Probably a good move since I spent the first half hour just being dumbstruck at the various seemingly insane path the trails take you through. That is a cliff. That and basically repeatedly dropping clipping, rolling the poor S18 as I curse my own crappy riding skills. Now a taller pedal height may have helped here, I have to say maybe since I'm not actually quite sure how much would an extra inch or two help, and also how the accompanying raising center of your gravity affect ride control, but one thing I'm sure is that I need a whole lot more practice as well as tune the S18 better if I really want to do well on these trails. adjust the pressure of my shock. They were still on the stiff side for road riding at 190 over 60, dropping it by 20 psi would probably have helped, and my tire pressure at 35 psi was also too high to better grip these rocky surfaces. I'll have to remember to bring the pump next time. my sense of how the Kingsong S18 held up, which is surprisingly well. Even some of the steeper, looser sections where I ran out of torque I felt can likely be overcome if I had rode a better line, but I unfortunately ran out of juice before the S18 did. Despite the difficulties, I have to say that it was probably some of the most fun I ever had on an electric unicycle. The S18 felt like it was finally in its own element and none of the challenges felt out of reach as long as I had the skill set for it. And I certainly would be coming back. Hopefully better prepare for it next time around. Oh man, look at the time, I somehow managed to waste another 10 minutes of your life, but I hope you enjoyed it. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and check out the link to my Patreon page if you like to support my work. And as much as we all love electric unicycle, the only way for us to get better wheels is to grow as a community. So tell your friends, teach them how to ride and get them hooked. Until the next video, thank you. One thing makes you